Welcome to Northern Michigan Update. I'm State Senator Jason Allen, and today we have Bob Traprinka from the Michigan uh, Railroad Association. Now, to give you a little bit of overview of why we're doing this today is, is that our rail infrastructure in the state is, uh, provides a tremendous asset to keep Michigan businesses uh, competitive and being able to ship worldwide uh, through the, the system that has been developed over the last uh, uh, centuries. Uh, in the United States, uh, rail is hauling twice as much freight as it did during the Second World War on less track. And Amtrak last month had its highest ridership in the history of Amtrak. And so with fuel costs, we have to be taking a look at how we keep Michigan jobs, how we keep Michigan competitive, and part of that will be transportation, and rails provide a great infrastructure. In northern Michigan right now, probably one of the largest users is uh, the Cherry Growers uh, Corporation outside of Traverse City and then a large cement operation near Elmira. Bob, it's great to have you here today. Thank you, Jason. I appreciate the opportunity. And tell me a little bit about the Michigan uh, uh, Railroad Association and what your role is at that association. Yes, the Michigan Railroad Association is a uh, trade group that represents the freight railroads that operate here in Michigan. Uh, we uh, represent the industry before state government, before the legislature, uh, the executive office, uh, state departments, um, and so forth. We also are involved in a safety program called Michigan Operation Lifesaver. Mm -hmm. This program is dedicated to the uh, prevention of crashes at highway, ra highway railroad grade crossings. We have a lot of programming that is done uh, to prevent these crashes mm -hmm. and have a safe highway system. And so for our listeners, and that's great, you've got, uh, and I, I remember that some of the reading I've done, there's like a, short line railroads, there's class one, is it class one or class A railroads? Kind of go through what are the different types of railroads that serve uh, Michigan? Sure, we, you basically have two different kind of railroads that uh, serve the country in Michigan. You have class one railroads and those are large railroads okay. and there are seven of those left in the United States. Okay. Uh, Michigan is fortunate to have uh, four of those railroads really? that operate and serve Michigan. Uh, the uh, CN Railroad that okay. serves uh, the northern UP part of your district, right. uh, CSX Transportation, mm -hmm. Norfolk Southern, and Canadian Pacific okay. Railroad that serves Michigan. While Canadian Pacific mm -hmm. does not have track in Michigan, sure. they have trackage rights that okay. run over uh, the uh, tracks of the other uh, freight railroads on a contractual basis. Okay. You have those large railroads, in the, except for up in the UP, where they uh, run through uh, the UP and up through Sault Ste. Marie to right. Canada. Uh, you, uh, uh, your district also has right. two uh, other railroads, sure. the Great Lakes Central that right. runs up into Traverse City. And that would be kind of like with the other class. Is that a short line? Or yes, is it, that, okay. would be, that would be a short line, okay. as well as the Lake States that okay. operates uh, uh, on the eastern part of the okay. state and goes up into Alpena, as okay. you know. Uh, but that is the second type of railroad. It's called a short line. Uh, those railroads uh, can be anywhere from 10, 15, 20 miles to maybe several hundred miles. They usually run just in the state of Michigan uh, or just in Indiana for if you have a short line in Indiana. Mm -hmm. They'll hook up to the major railroad. The short lines kind of serve as uh, city streets, okay. county roads. Okay. Uh, they hook up to the interstate highway system in uh, in railroad parlance, that mm -hmm. would be uh, the Class One railroad. Uh, the short lines uh, uh, serve to a large extent uh, the agriculture community in Michigan, uh, but okay. uh, they have a lot of other okay. uh, customers also. So, so let's go through um, uh, in the state um, sort of our big utilizers from what I've read and and some of the things that your organization have briefed me on. The auto industry is probably one of their biggest customers, is that? Sixty percent of the uh, business of the Class 1 railroads, which haul the bulk of uh, goods in Michigan, mm -hmm. uh, uh, haul autos, auto parts, uh, six percent of the revenue is based wow. on the auto industry. So, as we know, the uh, uh, auto companies are having a difficult time, the domestic right. companies in Michigan, uh, uh, and that is reflected uh, wow. uh, with our So 60% uh, of the customers. entire freight, because you know they always talk about how one every five jobs is directly related to the auto industry, and that's just another amazing statistic to still show how auto dependent we, we are. Absolutely. Okay, so the, then we've got the Canadian National up in sort of the, that runs through Chippewa and a little bit, I don't think it touches Mackinac County except on the far western edge, and then it goes to Sault Ste. Marie. 
Now, from what I've seen on the maps, they've got a bridge and, and they've got a large bridge in, in Sioux, Michigan that goes into Sioux, Ontario. Is that pretty much pass-through traffic that comes through from Chicago? Is that sort of what they haul? Well, uh, I think a lot of that is uh, uh, traffic, uh, uh, forest products, okay. and uh, iron ore okay. that is uh, produced up the okay. peninsula. CN, I just I don't want to uh, for, uh, slight CN sure. with the fact that they also have their major operations in the uh, uh, lower part of the state. They okay. come out of uh, Nova Scotia and, okay. and uh, Montreal, Toronto, okay. uh, under the uh, St. Clair River, Port Huron, and uh, into Flint, Lansing, and then down to Chicago. And that is by far the busiest rail line in Michigan. Wow. Well, they just built, uh, within the last 10 years, a new tunnel? The uh, tunnel was probably built, I'm thinking, right around 15, 16 years okay. ago. It was a $200 invest, $200 million, million. I'm sorry, investment uh, uh, brand new tunnel. Uh, and that tunnel was built so CN could ship double stack containers uh, through, uh, uh, through Michigan and, and into Chicago. Okay. And, uh, the, uh, you talked a little bit about the uh, CSX Norfolk Southern, and that's, they're, they're sort of an East Coast Railroad. They are an East Coast Railroad. Okay. They are uh, uh, they are the two uh, large Eastern railroads in the United States. Uh, they run through. They're both uh, headquartered in uh, southern part of the country. Uh, CSX is headquartered in Jacksonville, Norfolk Southern, Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, they run through about 22 to 24 states each, wow. and uh, come up into Michigan and serve uh, serve Michigan primarily. Uh, the auto industry, okay. but they also uh, bring in a lot of coal into Michigan that's needed for our power plants. Okay. Now the, then the Canadian Pacific has traffic rights, so those are the, the what, Class A's or the... Class 1's. Well, class 1's, okay. And, the, and then, um, then from there we go into sort of these uh, short lines that are, are uh, important to the northern part of our district. Now, you've got, you talked about the Great Lakes Central. And, and from what I've seen in the maps, they have uh, interchanges with, it looks like, uh, I know the Ann Arbor Railroad, and then I, I see, I've seen the CX and the Canadian National. Correct. So, that's so correct. That's, and, the, and how does that work? So if you're, let's just say you're uh, one of my former predecessors, uh, Senator George McManus, who's chairman of the board of cherry growers, and mm -hmm. they're shipping a, uh, a load of cherries to uh, down to Texas, which they have a re regular run on that. How correct. does that work? Correct. Well, the... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Cargo would be loaded up in um, in Traverse City, up yeah. in, up in the, those environs. Mm -hmm. uh, it'll go all the way down, uh, probably to Owasso, where it will connect. Uh, most likely, if it's going to Texas on a CN train, okay. and it will uh, head down to Texas. Uh, um, CN, uh, as well as CSX, I know funnel a. Uh, a lot of chemicals back and forth to Texas for sure. Dow up in the okay. Midland area. Okay, so example. that's part of the. Okay, so then, so then they get. There's a the way that this works out is is that there's agreements between, like in this situation, the old Tuscola and Saginaw Bay, or now the, uh, uh, the Great Lakes Central. Correct. There's an agreement for interchanges between uh, the the Great Lakes Central and the, the uh, CN or or CSX to get that product down. That's correct. Now. Has there been, um, uh, do you know, or is there much upgrade on that sort of those rail lines or infrastructure issues that they're working on right now? Well, uh, <clears throat> it, is, it is difficult to, to railroad in Michigan, particularly the farther north you go. Yeah. Why is that? Uh, well, basically because uh, you have less population, less okay. industry, and you have fewer trains okay. going up to the northern part right. of the state. Uh, thereby uh, you are earning fewer revenues. Okay. Uh, for example, the, the CN train that goes right directly through the heart of the state uh, down below, mm -hmm. uh, they'll have 50 or 60 high-speed trains going through, and those wow. will be uh, maybe a mile, mile and a half long wow. each. Wow. Uh, that's, that's a lot of freight being traversed. Uh, the trains, for example, going up to Traverse City, you might have two a week. Right. Uh, Correct. And, and, and they would be slower trains, right. and uh, they would not be necessarily real long trains. Mm -hmm. So uh, railroading is ex extremely capital intensive. Mm -hmm. uh, railroads invest, oh, about $100 million a year in private capital. 